Okay, and for this one, I will look at a couple of a couple of diagrams that are on your Moodle page. They're on the right-hand column, and they're little bitty ones that you can't see until you click on them. Let's take the simplest one first, which is DHCP. DHCP, really cool letters, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. What that means is that we can automatically send IP addressing information, including the IP address, the default gateway based on what we're sending out, the DNS server, if we had other services that we needed to send to that machine, we could configure them in DHCP. You will have the opportunity on more than one occasion to configure DHCP as you go through the course. Right now, what, what we want to kind of brand into our brain, burn into our brain, is that how the process works. One, it's a broadcast protocol. Broadcast protocols go how far? Destination goes to the router. That's one of the reasons we subnetted, wasn't it, to, to create broadcast domains. So a broadcast goes as far as the router. What this thing does in a broadcast, and a broadcast goes to every machine on the network, on that particular network. The 255 generally could be something, all ones in the, in the host bits. So when a computer comes on a Windows machine and the default configuration for Windows is to automatically get an IP address. When we do automatic IP addressing, that's what we're talking about. Sends a DHCP discover message. The easy way to remember this, by the way, is DORA. Discover, offer, request, acknowledge. You know, DORA the explorer, so now as silly as it is, maybe that will help. But it sends a DHCP discover message, which is a broadcast message that says, hey, DHCP server, any DHCP server, give me an address. If we don't have DHCP servers in that broadcast domain, and this is a broadcast domain in this room, and I don't see a DHCP server in here, do you? You guys see a DHCP server? Any place in this room? I don't. There's not one. We have the ability to put a service on called a DHCP relay agent, which says, oh, I got your broadcast message. Let me send it to the DHCP server for you so that you don't have to have a DHCP server on each subnet that way. Routers can be relay agents. Windows servers can be relay agents, although to me that would be kind of self-defeating. If we put a Windows server in as a DHCP relay agent, why don't you just put it in as a DHCP server? You can do either. But routers are kind of a handy thing to have that we can configure them as a DHCP relay. So we have this broadcast that says, I need an IP address. Give me an IP address. The network administrator set this thing up with a proper addressing structure and all of the things that go with it. The DHCP server here responds with the DHCP offer. And oh, by the way, every DHCP server, if we have more than one, Every DHCP server will respond with an offer. So you may get more than one offer. That'd be a great deal if you're one of these bachelor guys, wouldn't it? But more than one offer, that's okay. The client then sends a DHCP request, requesting from one of the servers to have that address. And the server that it's going to take the address from is whichever one responds first. There's no discrimination there. It's just like, okay, you're first. I'll take your address. Even though all of them respond, because it's broadcast, the others don't know that it's been sent, so they all send it out at the same time. Then the server sends an acknowledgment and says, okay, you can have that address. We now have a DHCP assigned address. And when we looked at IP config all, we had a lease time in there. And that's part of what's configured in an automatic address, in a DHCP address. Uh, you lease the address, kind of like you lease an apartment. You lease an apartment for six months, a year, three months, two weeks, or you, you may lease a motel room for two days or three days or whatever else. These things lease addresses from the DHCP server for a certain amount of time. 
the network administrator controls that amount of time. You can set that for whatever you want. I think the default for Windows is like eight days. May be too long, may not be too long. If you look at Cox, if you look at your public address, Cox Communications leases it for 24 hours. In the DHCP process, there is a timing mechanism. We lease it for, let's say, 24 hours, because that's an easy thing to do. At the 50% point, 12 hours, we ask, can I get that address renewed? Just like in an apartment. If you were leasing an apartment, your lease was at some point in it, you'd go say, hey, and he wanted to stay there, I want to renew my lease. So these things renew their lease at the 50% point. Unless there's a reason not to renew the lease, it's going to get renewed. That's why in the Cox Communications world, at least, and I think probably in the Verizon DSL world, we wind up with what they call persistent addresses. The address really doesn't change very often. Because you just keep renewing the same address. And if you'll watch these machines in here, based on the amount of time the lease is, I think that if you look at it today and then you come back tomorrow or Wednesday, you're going to find out you're probably going to have the same address because it renews that address. So we renew those things. If something happens to the DHCP server and for some reason you can't get an address at 87.5% of the lease time, it asks any available DHCP server for an address. When the lease expires, it quits using the address. So if the lease expires, the address goes away. DHCP. If we, and let's do one other thing here, we have this, in the Microsoft world in particular, we have this thing called an APIPA, Automatic Private IP Address, which is an indicator that your computer is set up to get a DHCP, an automatic address, but there's no DHCP server. What it does is gives itself a 169.254 something something address. So if you see a 169.254 address when you do the IP config, now I've got a problem. The problem is you can't contact the DHCP server. Little indicators there. DHCP is a handy thing to have. It's a handy way to keep your IP addressing scheme straight. Because can you imagine what would happen if we let Students put in their own IP addresses. <clears throat> what about if you made the network administrator put in all the IP addresses? We tried that. How many mistakes you think are going to be made in three or four or five hundred computers? And let's say that you have, I don't know, eight or nine thousand computers or ten thousand computers. That's a lot of addresses to type in. You don't have to do it every day, but you have to do it fairly frequently. So DHCP. And again, as we go on into the program, we'll configure DHCP servers. You'll configure them both in Windows and in Linux, as well as DNS servers. You'll configure them both of the operating systems. So it's something there right now. What is it? What does it do? Oh, yeah, it gives out IP addresses, dynamic host configuration protocol. Uh, if you get a 169.254, means that you're trying to contact a DHCP server, but it's not responding. There isn't one available. So the Windows system gives itself an IP address, a 169.254, which, by the way, is a Microsoft. It's not a private IP address. It's a Microsoft IP address. They own that address range, but they put it into the Windows machines. They can communicate. There's no default gateway on this one, by the way. The 169.254, no default gateway is a 255.255 subnet mask. If we unplug DHCP from this room, all of these computers could communicate with each other using an APIPA address, but you couldn't get past the router, okay? Because there's no default gateway when we go into this thing. The last one that I want to look at is DNS. DNS has two different kinds of lookups. <coughs> it has an iterative lookup, which is this complex one here, and then it has a lookup where it just gives us the answer. Computers, workstations, ask for what's called a recursive lookup, which is, just give me the answer. I don't care what other stuff you have to do. I don't care how many places you have to go to find it. Just tell me what the final answer is. 
when we've done these pings and trace routes and wherever to yahoo.com, we got an IP address in the top. DNS is the service that returns that IP address when we use a name because computers aren't real good at names, but they are real good at numbers. So what we have to do before we can actually get anywhere to even ARP the default gateway to know that we're going across the default gateway is we've got to get an IP address. One of the IP addresses, and I keep thinking of these things that are, that, that are kind of there, one of the IP addresses that should be in your DHCP configuration is a DNS server, a fixed IP address, because that's the only way you're ever going to be able to resolve those names if you've got some place to do that. And you've got to know where that place is. So that's where, why we would have a fixed IP address for those. So recursive lookup is my PC. My PC goes to the local DNS server, and we had a couple of them over there in the NOC. That are, that are resolving addresses. They have some addresses that are locally listed and some that they go find. And when they go find them, they cache them so that they don't have to go look them up again. <clears throat> so what happens when you don't have an IP address? My computer goes to the DNS server, says recursion allowed, recursive lookup, and says, I want to get an address for where are we going to here, for some www.yahoo.com, whatever it is. The server doesn't have anything. It goes to the root server, and we saw that there is a thing called root servers. The, the root of the DNS lookup is the dot at the end that we don't see. The root is always going to be the dot. And if you ever put in a root in your own area, the only thing it can look up are the things that are there. Because when it's the root, it's the root. It knows everything. That's what a root knows. So we would go to the root, and it would then send us back the answer to, let me see if I can go through the steps. I'm going to get over here where I can read the steps. So step one, question, what is the IP address of some webserver.com? Please reply to my IP address. Goes to the, the user's primary DNS server. On the virtual machines, it was 1060, 66, 253, a computer that's sitting over in the NOC. On these machines, it's 1060.1.4 and 10.60.1.5, computers that are over in the NOC. So we go ask those, those machines what is the address of everybody's favorite, Facebook.com. By the way, I was fooling around some stuff the other day to see what's the number one. You know what's number one on the whole Internet? Facebook. Twitter didn't even make it in the top five. Guess what was number two? Twitter's not quite as popular as Facebook. Google. Google Mail. YouTube was 15. We can look at some of those if you want here a little bit. I'll show you a tool that will do that. So anyhow, we go to the primary DNS server, and it says, and it goes to the root server and says, where can I find the IP address of some web server.com? The root server says, I don't know. But I know somebody that does know, and that would be the guy that's got all the .com listings. So it sends you the IP address of the name server that has the .com listings. You then go to the .com namespace, the one here, the .com namespace, and says, hey, what is the IP address of some web server .com? The answer is... The answer to the primary DNS server of some web server.com knows that. I don't know, but some web server domain, ECPI tech, knows. So it sends this DNS server the IP address of the some web server domain's DNS server. My server then goes to the primary DNS server or some web server.com and says, what is the IP address of www.somewebserver.com? www represents a computer somewhere. ROA, roanoke.ecpi.net, our Moodle server. Roanoke represents a computer somewhere. We didn't use www, but we used Roanoke. ROAVirtualPC.ecpi.net represents a computer. We can go over into the NOC and I'll show you the computer. That's ROAVirtualPC.ecpi.net. 
So the first part represents a resource. The rest generally is going to be the uh, domain name that allows us to go find that particular resource. And what we're looking for is an IP address. This one would then have a listing for www.someWebserver.com. Uh, it would send that answer to the DNS server. My workstations have been sitting here waiting all along, hasn't it? It hasn't said a word since it said, what is it? The DNS server that I ask initially then tells me what the IP address is of www.somewebserver.com. So the iterative part is what the DNS server does when it does all these iterations in order to find this information. The final answer, recursive, comes back to us. We didn't, we didn't, our computer didn't care about how much work the DNS server had to do. All it wanted to know was what the answer is. So DNS, service that takes a fully qualified domain name, www.yahoo.com, and returns an IP address so that we can actually get there. We can't get anywhere on the internet routing names. We have to route IP addresses. Are there questions? Probably ready for me to be done, aren't you? I will be done.